Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiser Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and we're playing as a Sacred Union of Tibet. It's March the 13th, 1939, and a growing socialist government. And the pursuit of true leftist unity and global cooperation, Rourke has decided to open our elective red theocracy to the wider leftist world, inviting figures from the Russian pro uh, prolet cult and the Russian cosmists' movements. The American spiritualist movement, various branches of theosophy, Pan Asian allies in Japan, Vietnam, China, Korea, Indian allies like Nehru and Gandhi, American environmentalists and esotericists, Letterman and Lovecraft, and many more, creating a united international front dedicated to the unification and salvation of all mankind. Together, we shall build a better world and open Shambhala to the masses. Though many many cannot stay here for long, we shall incorporate their ideas and work with their with their truths, and to our borders march over there so that, that all can be free. We'll be the beacon of true leftist unity. Nice. And remove the masses with art and faith, of course. Which I believe I read last time. So if you read this again, please go ahead. And there you go. So, under the Manu Fuyama for the new root race. Um, I read this as well. So you read this one more time, too. Please go ahead as well. And then, United Culture, of course. And there's that one, too. Protecting Antiquity with Aurora Pact. Formed apart by a slew of varied foreign backers, the Oryk Pact, formerly entitled the Treaty on the Protection of Artistic and Scientific Institutions and Historic Monuments, shall be established along international lines and be recognized by all major powers in order to protect antiquity, archaeological treasures, cultural and historical objects and sites, scientific discoveries, dying languages, and other creations of wider humanity so that our heritage can be preserved eternally. Knowledge is power, we must guard it well, so let us march together as one humanity, united in purpose of protect our diverse and unique histories, cultures, nature, and the last shreds of what the great ancestors left behind. Information of the Rorik Pact enables decisions to extend our influence in Nepal, Sikkim, and Bhutan. Um, and the comment, a comment from yesterday's video was, Can you do a Equestria War, Chittal, as Hovershalm? Uh, I'm not sure exactly which nations those are, but eventually. And here, um, for the war effort at least. We're actually doing okay. We're actually able to push in a little bit. Um, as you can see, we're trying to make uh, some more supply lines through all of here, but it's going to take some serious time. And uh, they still want to attack us. We're having supply issues here and there, but you know, what else is new? You know, it's way forward. Uh, if we get win here, that would be fantastic, but I don't know if we can or not. We might be able to. They do have the regulars, but we are fighting in the mountains, and our general is way higher skill level than all the other guys, too. Yeah, get rid of that militia, you know. Japan supports our independence. Japanese advisors have turned up today, bringing gifts and support in our struggle against the Chinese. We're grateful for their gestures, but do we really want to skip Japanese aid so readily? Refuse them. We'll take what we can get. Japanese independence backing. Sure. We're here to help them help us help them, and help ourselves, basically. So they won't keep attacking us, that's fine with us. We're okay with that. Yeah, so we're striking out. And uh, Maitreya's Satya Yuga for our physical Shambhala. Our national father and leader, Nicholas Rourke, is truly an avatar of virtue, piety, peace, and justice, and the fifth and final Buddha of this Kalpa. The incarnation of the fifth Dalai Lama, the king of Shambhala, that will finish the great plan of the second sacred union of the East in progress as to perfection of the common good of the holy city of Tolling Bells, the herald of new Satya Yuga, and the fated Kalki as a tenth and final incarnation of Vishnu. The Matreya was that, who, that was promised to usher in a new golden age and open the gates to Shambhala does truly exist between the veil of existence, accessible from both our physical world and the spiritual world beyond us, under Nicholas Rourke. This golden age that was promised has been achieved, and our people rejoice as humanity slowly comes to accept their idyllic fate. Though we still must labor endlessly to ensure paradise does not fall, we've created a utopian progress that even the heavens shall sing for. Ah, oh, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, ah, so we got this line done, which... But we need to get the one from our capital down here, which is questionable. Uh, against these guys, we're doing okay. We, we, we gotta continue pushing into this direction. We don't have enough divisions really to do so currently, unfortunately, though. So, can we do this? Two divisions against these guys. Now, we are making artillery, we are making guns, and here's what we have for a cab. We've got 18 combo width with artillery. We've got 18 combo width with artillery and recon. We're not making any support companies. I would like to throw some engineers on our soldiers, and we do have some interwar carriers. Uh, we're going to wait for uh, next one. Formation of the Rorak Pact. The Treaty of Alliance on the Protection of Artistic and Scientific Institutions and Historic Monuments. Well, the Rorak Pact, for short, it is a brain out of Nicholas Rorak and his family that calls for peaceful cooperation and unity for humanity along the preservation and defense of cultural, historical, and archaeological objects. And the preservation of uh, culture always has precedence over any military or ideological need. Oh, God. <clears throat> Backed by many of the great powers and funded by Rorak's vast array of international backers and allies, uh, the Rorak Pact will keep the past. 
and the future of humanity is secure and safe while promoting peaceful unity of the human race. Now, we just have to decide whether or not to include a total military alliance with the Ro within the Rorkback in order to truly ensure this union happens. We won't slowly the Rorkback back to dabbling in military matters. Should we be full alliance in every sense of the word? Uh, yeah. Oh god. Now they have way more allies and whatnot. That is not ideal. Seriously? Bro. Chinese United Front. On Tom. Oof. Uh, Eastern Socialist Union. Well, are you level 7 now? You still level 6. I think too important there. Oh, oh god, he's. Uh, wow. Um, who do we have or what do we not have? So, General Tashi Dondrub. Infantry expert? I, I do like those quite a bit. I think we'll go by the will of the immortal Red Mahatma. The physical form of Vladimir Lenin may be gone, but his immortal spirit as a Red Mahatma will shall always live on as a true leader of the Rorkist movement. Though uh, Nicholas Rourke and Lenin's living brother Dmitry Ilyevich Ulanov oh God, shall remain the leading mortal servants of this immortal deity, functioning as the unquestionable and blessed instruments of Lenin's will in this mortal plane. Mahatma Lenin and the other Buddhist deities. And Soviet martyrs stand shall always have the head seat at the table under crimson theocracy, being the official head of the state in face of the nation as Nit Rourke and the clergy work behind the scenes to build the way to Shambhala. Local teachers. It is time we leverage the education facilities and monasteries to their full potential. Monasteries are the repository of our cultural history, and with some funding, get in and franchise more young people and set them up towards technical education and Lhasa. It's good for experience, I guess. You know? Slovene Republic. Um. Not good that we have to cover this tile too. I guess these two tiles. That's really bad. Quite bad. Mm. Yeah. Second son of Japanese war will help Japan wins. Rorik's ball. In order to spread the truth of Agni Yoga to the wider wall, uh, Rorik and his family worked to plan an international conference for the wider esoteric world to behold. Wanting his own world to be united by his ideas, Rorik worked to plan an academic, aesthetic, and artistic event truly refined and perfect in every way in order to showcase our nation as a paragon of culture and physical manifestation of Shambhala for all his friends to partake in. Inviting all of his close friends and correspondents throughout both the East and West, figures like Tashi uh, Namgyala, the Dalai Lama, the Bog Gelen, uh, Kyong De, Jidu Krishnamurti, Oni Saburo Deguchi, Ryohe Uchida, Gada Miran Jalama, Edward Longstreet Bowden, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, uh, Henry Wallace, Carl Willigut, Henry Kimmer, and the rest of the Anonaba from Germany, delegates from the Aerosoft movement in Austria, the Yamato dynasty, the Neo Scythians in Russia, and the spiritualist part of the Pacific States of America, from Howard uh, Phillips Lovecraft, the omnipotent Um of the magnificent Pierre Arnold Bernard and Lothrop Stoddard in New England, the American president and other world leaders of import, and so many more. Rourke invited half the world, and nearly all invited were in attendance. As figures like these and many more came to show appreciation of Rourke and his family as they performed and proselytized with them all. Getting a levitation contest with William Dilly Pelly, Papa Kim Bangu, and Sundra before paying in unison with Picasso, Dali, and Kahlo as Lovecraft wrote nervously about the whole affair. The extravagant batch was one to be remembered by all and served to spread her message while cementing the Rorikist philosophy into the hearts and minds of the world's most influential cultural titan. A true rogues gallery, gallery of misfits. Fascinating. Came to in Bharati, uh, or Bharat collaboration, the homes of the revolution in East Asia, Longyan, and Calcutta will lead Tibet to the future. The concern is not diverted by imperial ambition, and the commitment to uniting the banners of Asia is noble. Well, uh, White Tara or Red Mahatma? The rationalism to better symbolize by two radical figures. Afghan Dorzhev and Nicholas Rurik, Afghan, a tutor to the Dalai Lama, claims the Russian Empire is a true protector of Buddhism in Asia. Rurik, who was exiled shortly after his arrival, believes the Soviets fulfilled this role. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, uh, regulars are Dab Dabs. Our general staff is having some extreme difficulty coordinating the different command structure of the Dab Dabs and the regulars. Unless we are willing uh, to expend more effort to keep their distinct leadership in perpetuity, the decision will be preferable. The Dub Dubs are extremely popular with the Tibetan Republic, and but the regulars have proven more effective in the last wars against Sichuan. Which we might need immediately. Because these guys are not going to be able to hold out at all. Pan Buddhist National Liberation Front, and there's our pact. 
Yeah, these guys are getting s smashed. Legation cities are doing very well. Good. Um. Good. Air Force, Air Force, Navy. Well, and there we go. Any way we can push out at all. Probably a better defense position, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Now we can go any way we wanted. But we're gonna go with this one. Nice job, guys. Yeah, that was a big old mistake by doing all that against us. Jining, oh hello. Yep, you better not leave that open. Cats are pretty strong, of course we're defending across the river too, so. Helps out. We've not. We've only lost eight thousand, nine thousand versus a crap ton. So we've done half of all the war score. It's not to love, you know. You're not gonna win, but if you have support and help, well, you might. You do have militia here too. Get through another division as well. We might be able to beat him up, maybe. Good. Nice. Very nice. Troubles. Slay the Thunder Dragon. Goes to war with Bhutan, Himalayan Peak, and Nepal, Bhutanese Brothers, and an invitation to the Pact. Call to Kathmandu, Nepal. Scale it. Slay them. Call to them. Assume national leadership. Mei Jing Zhao. Huh. By being the strongest faction capable of standing against foreign domination, we can begin to assert our leadership over all of China and lead the nation against foreign aggression. That sounds like fun. 1v3, huh? Well, they are using militia, which is not very good. But looks like we're demolishing their infantry, too. Ooh, what do we not have? Oh, yes, please. The question of the Red Mahatma's morality. Under the Red Mahatma, immortal and wise as ever, we shall reach Shambhala. However, there are two main camps within our Budo communist government on how we should approach our veneration of the same. We can either invite Lenin's Lenin moving brother, Dmitry Elevich Ulyanov, a fellow communist currently out in Crimea, to the ease of being avatar of his brother's will and grace, or we can stand by the immortal spirit and soul of Lenin himself, with work guiding the nation beyond the guise of the ever living, ethereal visage of Vladimir Lenin, the everlasting Buddha, and the Red Hot Mahatma for faith. What shall we decide? Lenin is immortal and should give and shall always lead us even from the grave. Avatar of the Red Mahatma becomes leader of the Total Party. Oh. Invite Lenin's living brother Dmitry Beast Avatar on the plane. Dmitry Ulyanov. Invite Lenin's living widow Nadezhda. Nadezhda. To be his avatar on this plane. And we have Avatar of the Red Mahatma. Nice. Fantastic. The Pan Asian Heart of Universalist Perfection. Um. Pan-Asian dream? Global unification? Open the world? Open the portal of Shambhala to the world? Well, we went right, or hard right. We're going to probably go this way. <coughs> the Union for Soviet Shangri-La. In order to progress our dream towards the united humanity, we must follow Lenin's dream of creating a union of social states bound together by the common goal of creating a leftist utopia. Now that the state is secure and orchism cemented in place, we shall march onwards to build a better union, under a better form of socialism, for a better world. Oh. Nice. 
Yeah, we're not strong enough to beat them here. I wouldn't mind being strong enough here, but that's not enough. We don't have enough divisions. So, Japanese are doing okay. Japanese are in the front over here. If they could crush these guys, that'd be good. We're stuck here. And they're doing decent over here, too. And they're fighting here, too, so. I think the Japanese will probably win in the end because the Qing are fighting up here, the Japanese are fighting up here. Eventually, they'll break and crack. Um, that's good for them. We need support companies. I need more military factories. Ugh, it's terrible. I know. There's not really much else we can do there. Well, let's see what the direction of the reform is first. For new treasure. The Tibetan treasury suffered greatly from the crises of the past two decades. From Shikitsei's political opposition, the issue's isolation, we must appoint a treasurer who can coax more money out of these monasteries. Construct the loss of machine factory. The grounds broke for the loss of the machine factory several years ago, left to languish and turned into a shrubbery. So I'm the Kishaga allocate the necessary funds to build a machine factory, which will, you will make future construction projects easier. Books and electric, or electrical machine office. The electrical machine office in Lhasa is our sole modern telegraph office and has been in operation unrepaired since the British Revolution. We must purchase a large electrical generator for their office and investigate the assembly of radio transmitters. Protect the monasteries. Security of the monasteries in Tibet ranges greatly. And the experience with the Kum Kumbu Monastery in Yushu proves that they can support a city besiege. Everywhere you were to build more zongs around monasteries, they'd be able to project their power more safely. Direction of the military, uh, Tibet military reform. We need to decide the direction of our military. Um, to pass labor the Tibetan army, the first direction is focus on the Dab Dabs and make it more rigid and make it more meritocratic. Another, another direction is focus on a more modern and regular army. This will require pursuing Dab Dabs and reducing their influence in government. What should we choose? Dab Dabs? What is this? Dab Dabs galvanized. Give our recruitable population more attrition, defense on attack territory. Our regular army is needed. Well, we don't want any more paternal autocracy. Let's go with that one. We're going to lose a lot of population. Even though we need it as much. Hopefully, eventually, this will not hurt us as much in the end. Leadership of these warrior monks have been successfully retired and replaced by our loyal men. We need some time for loyal political ambassadors to convince the rest of Dab Dabs of the value of better training. Nice, we have more divisions out soon, thank God. And they're decent, actually, so. Foreign volunteers, while many Tibetans are constant or content with defending their homeland. There's a select few adventure soldiers who wish to ensure Tibet's safe borders through volunteership. For some reason, I believe that this could be a viable strategy to contain our foes. Ah. Planes are good. Planes are good. Ah, rails are on the Tagula Pass. There is a pass that now to now no train inside the horse power to cross. A recent discussion with engineers revealed an alternate route around Tangula Pass that, while longer, is less of an incline. We hope that these engineers can procure trains can handle the pressure, but we are optimistic that the pass can be useful even if unrailed. Point of treasure. The Tibetan treasury has suffered greatly from the crises of the past two decades, from Chikate's political opposition to Yushu's isolation. Once the point of treasure could coax more money out of the monasteries, of course. Spend the mint. At Thrapichi, our mint office has steadily worked with little mechanical improvements in decades, so we invest in modern railing. Our milling machine and to base currency to do a lower construction of silver, so will enable us to afford more machines in the future and realize the Red Mahatma's vision. The words and truths of the immortal Red Mahatma let it still sound uh, uh, ring soundly as Zorak builds his Budo, communist, cultural, and spiritual utopias atop the third, third of the world. However, our ideology message is not made for just the peoples of the Himalayas, but the entire world, and so our syncretic Soviet ideology must be spread across the skies and stars. Once Marshal Malasa had ushered in a true world revolution, and the only man that can lead, the, lead us by Lenin's will is Rourke himself, so let's march to reclaim our destiny. We'll bring the revolution to the Orient. Oh, wait, everything's a core. Then what was the point of purging the Dob Dobs? Oh, god dang it. Well, that's a bad idea. Dang it, my bad. So we got a core on everything. Oh, look at that. Sacred Soviet Union of Shambhala. And a war goal against everybody. Which we're probably not going to do in the end. Um. Oh, we have to, look at this. 13 divisions. That's pretty nice, actually.
Nice. We want to see what this will do. Need more army reform, huh? Remove army troubles, which would be nice. Still. I'm technically that's a core, but we're fighting over mountains, over rivers. Overall, this is not good for us. Well, that was fast. Spend the mint, huh? And they're not going to be very successful over there. Cannons, not bad. But let me just grab that anyways. I'll get around here. That'll be good. Roughly to a day. Let's see what we can do about this, though. King Xiong government is gone? Yep. Uh, very nice. Which means now they can focus all their forces. Down in the south. Oh, are they fighting these guys too? Oh, that sucks. It's been the mint. The very least, I like to see us at least be able to defeat these guys, so it's been the arsenal. Their arsenal tip has degraded since the last British inspection to a repository. Oh, look at this. Uh, confiscate firearms instead of a proper tool for defense. If our armies to defend Tibet for more united threat, we must bring metallurgists in to clean and repair the tip arsenal. Marg uh, Sar Scars empowered regulars. Decades after the first Zmog Scar Regiment was organized under the 13th Dalai Lama, the army of Tibet is finally fully modernized. Like most reforms in Tibet, this change comes from the top down, starting with our finance minister and continuing our officers first. All the larger divisions. Uh, well, you can able to defend better against the modernized armies of the east. Oh, that's really fantastic, actually. Improved mountain pathways. The roads that stretch from east to west into Tibet are entirely unmaintained by Gandan for Drang. For military security, we must pave these roads with gravel using our civil workforce since we lack the framework to employ our enterprise to solve this. Dode Valley Hydroelectricity. The Dode Valley was recommended to us by British diplomats for experimental hydroelectric turbines. This ambitious project would be the first of its kind in the country, and if successful, could prepare civil engineers for more ambitious projects. Scrape the Himalayas. Sections of the Himalayas are sacred. Being home of the Bodhisattvas and Hindu lords, and we pray this mining operation we undertake do not, does not disturb them. Or remember the fate of the uh, Kairin Rab Kunzang Mondo and the, the bright sun whose mineralogical expedition caused such a row that forced him into seclusion for disturbing the spirits. Uh, Reorganize the Tshag. The Tshag office is a crucial spot for Tibet's route through the Kham. Those locations are in of administrative reorganization if we are to better serve the needs of those people of Kham. Invest in Kham. Kham is more progressive than half of Tibet, and the majority of our core priority members come from Kampa nobility. We should reward their sacrifice for democracy by focusing in funds on uh, estates. British Indian Model Army? Nah, we can't do that one. Oh, we can't do most those two either. Well, that sucks for them. Uh, secret deal of the KMT. We must guarantee that the main element of our claim in our lands, the KMT, do not define our sovereignty once they win. A secret deal can be arranged for the KMT Central Committee to amend the Mongolian and Tibetan Affairs Commission, which will guarantee the KMT's protection against warlord and interlopers. And, oh. Well, we can't do this one, unfortunately. You do this one, please, your head. And we can't do the rest of these and here we are at everybody uh we won the war and actually everything worked out really well because we got cores on everything so that it was extremely cheap to uh get everything so we got the vast majority of china now obviously not all of china but the work pack is looking pretty good we got all up here we got all around down here oh, we got actually coastline we got 53 million population actually we have almost 400 million people living as core population right now we're beating up bhutan um, so we're doing actually really well. Called Kathmandu, Bhutan, yes, please die. Um, so that's good. Uh, even though I think at this point, I might just use Consequence to annex the entire world. Uh, just because, well, I don't see a point not to. Let's see what Nepal says first, though. And actually, we were doing really well because we were building up roads and whatnot and improving infrastructure and uh, making sure that we had enough supply all the way through here. So overall, not bad, especially when you have cores and everything. I wish I knew earlier that you get bonus to attack and defense on, on core territory. But uh, yeah, with all these being cores, fantastic. 
makes it really cheap to annex stuff, but I don't think I want to spend all the extra time off screen to like manually take everybody out, so probably not going to happen, even though there's literally no point for me to do this too, building up the infrastructure here, but Sacred Soviet Union of Shambhala, pretty fun, especially when you get led by uh, the Avatar of the Red Mahatma. And thank you to whoever recommended this in my uh, Discord server, who said, hey, you should try this out. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I have time. And I'm glad I did do it, because it was a lot of fun. Um, fighting in Asia is never fun, if you play Hoi Four at all. So, but this one is actually quite fun. Actually quite a bit. Hello. Oh, oh, actually, oh. They got a lot of allies. No, we're good. So they actually joined us. Look at that. Funny. But I'll see you. Oh, oh, we can integrate them. Oh, that's really cool. That's actually really awesome. And we also are trying to finish off the army farms. I'll well. see you in just a few seconds. And there we have it. Totally don't look at the time. And I totally didn't use cons commands for anything like this at all. Yeah, absolutely not. Oh, look at that. The fall of Germany. I don't know. Connections to esoteric. Uh, Russian esoterics. A contemporary of Rourke who just wished to travel to Tibet to find Shambhala before Rourke's own journeys. Alexander Parchenko is a famed biologist and researcher of an anomalous phenomena that worked with the likes of fellow allies of Rourke like Gleb Boki, and was known for being the first prominent academic researcher for Shambhala. Or what he called Hyperborea in his studies in Russia, a mystic expert researcher and fanatical Tibetanologist. Barchenko shall be welcomed into our government along with thinkers and cosmicists like him, including Gleb Boki, Mikhail Jermasimov, Vladimir Kirillov, Alexander Bogdanov. Vladimir Vernatsky, Alexander Chesky, Nikolai Kruziev, Vladimir Mayakovsky, Hans Fleischhacker, other disciplines or disciples of Tsiolkovsky and Fyodorov, and even works of Bolshevik friend Grigory Chicherin, creating a growing academia of occultists, metaphysical and paranormal genius to help bring a utopia to the state. We shall be uplifted by the genius and the city of tolling, tolling bells. Have the public dreams about a new capital for all mankind and rejoice united with him. Rourke wishes to continue his great plan and a progression towards the common good and Pax Cultura by breaking ground on the holy city that has kept them up at night and his divinely inspired dreams. Be built at the foot of the Mount Beluka. As the new city of tolling bells will be the mecca of our new sacred union, as we strive to unlock Shambhala, spiritual and syncretic paradise showcasing the art cult, uh, architecture, culture, and spiritual evolution of all mankind as varied cultures and identities in one eclectic and highly varied city that shall serve as our Eden until the gates of Shambhala can be found. From Altai to Antuba to Mongolia and Bharatia, the Buddhists of the Far East have a new metropolis to look towards as we rebuild the shining city upon the hill, so that one day all humanity may rejoice and live a life of peace and prosperity behind its doors. As we labor to build this new holy city, uh, new Zvenagorod, we must decide if we shall move our political and administrative infrastructure into the city under construction, or we shall wait in for paradise to be fully built before moving there, keeping the capital in Lhasa until such a time. We move to the base of Mount Baluka to find salvation for all. The capital stays in Lhasa until the city of Tolling Bells is finished. I'll go with that one. Oh, 64. Better come ruined. Mobilize our economy. Assume national leadership. Ah, uh, sure. Fine. Right of Albania. Oh, construct the Vilka Bites Air Research Facility. Alright, uh. War for the Himalayas and to create Sikkim. Oh. Interesting. Oh. For some reason, I thought we'd get cores on everything. I guess not. We got cores on what? A lot of population centers. Oh, pretty much all of Russia. Oh, I didn't realize we... we I thought it would be the entire world. But not this group here, too. Interesting. Well, this is what we wanted in the end anyway, so... Look at that, 0%, huh? Core state? Yeah, these are all core states, you know, down here, so... Some reason I thought the world was. My bad. Well, it's one way to do it, I guess. You know? Uh, occupy territories. Yeah, there's a lot to go through. Look, police force. Oh, look at this reconciliation. Look at that. That's really fantastic. Daily compliance goes up by a crap ton compared to what we can get before. Um, you know what? We'll do that one. And yeah, so, some of us can do do that. Not everybody can though. Uh, like Bhutan? No. Interesting. Botswana, Bulgaria. Commune of France. Here. Who can use uh, reconciliation? Dominion of Delhi. 
Uh, about Japan. Anything Asian or no? Oh, interesting. Well, I guess it is what it is. I guess we could probably use the military police, even though we're pretty much done with this campaign. Even though we can't really do very much, you know. And to get these guys, army reform into good Bhutan, which would be nice. But hey, I think we're going to end it there. We've done very well, and I really enjoy this campaign. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.